Welcome to the Vanderbilt C4E Alumni Interview Series. Today's interview will be featuring Brian Fox, the founder and CEO of Confirmation. To start, Brian will give us a brief recap of his career since graduating. Um, so actually, uh, my career, uh, this career started uh, when I was at Owen. So between my first and second year of business school, I uh, started Confirmation.com. I had written the business plan for the business in Jermaine Bear's uh, entrepreneurship class. <clears throat> and he had uh, suggested and recommended that I run with the business as my internship, but I didn't, didn't have the money to start the business. And so I was interviewing with other dot-com businesses that I had worked for previously for both Ernst & Young and Audit, French Waterhouse Coopers, and the Mergers and Acquisitions Group, uh, both in Dallas. And my intent was to work for a, a small startup to get that experience because I knew at some point I wanted to always own my own business. And um, so I was looking at other uh, businesses, and then my father was killed in an accident by, uh, toward the end of my first year of business school. And so my mom and brother and I used his life insurance policy, and that was the, the seed capital for the business and allowed me to start uh, confirmation.com in, uh, in June of 2000, right between my first and second year of, of business school. And then uh, watched the, the, the dot-com crash happen. I graduated in May of 2001, and shortly thereafter, 9-11 happened. And so the financial markets took kind of a double hit and uh, really a global economic disaster. Uh, but so I moved my business into my grandmother's, one of my grandmother's uh, garages, and uh, there was four of us there, and uh, nobody got, got paid except in stock, basically. Everybody ate their own expenses for the most part, ran up my credit card debt to pay the expenses of the business, and deferred my, my student loans from Owen. And, um, but fortunately, we had good things happen. Uh, the business uh, continued to grow, and uh, kind of we raised some funding along the way. So in total, we raised uh, just shot $12 million of, of investment capital. Uh, then we did a, a, a recapitalization of the business, in order to recap of the business about three years ago, where we brought in $60 million, really all for secondary capital uh, from Great Hill Partners. And then just a year ago, we sold the, the whole business to, to Thompson Reuters uh, for about $430 million. That's amazing. Could you go into a little bit more detail about what your company is and where the idea came from? Yeah, I, I had, uh, as a staff auditor at Ernst & Young, I had seen the, 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 fir the firms, the profession, move from paperwork files to electronic work files, with the exception of things like confirmation, anything that touched a third party. I went over to, to PricewaterhouseCoopers, actually tried to get out of the audit space, uh, had a lot of fun in the m and side of the world, but got pulled on some audits there and saw that firm also transitioning from uh, paper work files to electronic work files. And so I had uh, had seen both firms said, you know, here's two of the largest firms in the world that both have a problem that, number one, was very inefficient. It was a four to eight week process at best, um, about a 43% error rate, reconfirmation rate. But really what I saw most uh, disappointingly was that I could easily circumvent their processes to commit financial fraud. And so I said, here's two of the largest accounting firms in the world. And I, as a 22-year-old, 23-year-old staff auditor, I could commit financial fraud on these firms, and they'd, and they'd never know it. And so I thought that when I went back to business school and thought of a business that, that was a needed business, I said, we could use this, this new thing that was about three years old called the Internet uh, and, and make the process a near real-time process, make it a lot more efficient, and really eliminate the opportunity for, uh, for fraud to, to occur. And so uh, really that was the, the aha moment. Probably you know, one of the cooler things is we've caught billions of dollars of fraud uh, since then with the service. So uh, that, that's always been a lot of fun. What served as your biggest motivator in deciding to move forward and launch this company? Yeah, I, I was really just passionate about the ability to help the good guys catch the bad guys. I thought that you know, given the new technology that existed, we could really leverage that technology in our profession because it was a problem that I saw at both Ernst & Young and Price Warehouse Coopers, and I knew it. If those firms had that, that problem, then really every firm globally, not just in the U.S., but globally had the same problem. And that I had seen you know, different crashes and, and different fraudsters get away with different uh, thefts. And so I said, you know, here's a way that we can actually help, have a, a positive mission, a, a positive impact on people, uh, help protect you know, the retirees, the, the investors, the grandparents. Uh, whoever was, was trusting those numbers to be correct and trusting the businesses they were investing in or lending to, 
um, I thought there was a, that was a great opportunity for us to, to, to be able to help. My mom had, my family's from Nashville, my mom had been in the first class of female uh, police cadets. And, um, and my brother, I had a younger brother, and he and I grew up running around the backyard on our bikes, you know, chasing the bad guys, wearing her, her police uniform with a bobby stick. And he ended up becoming a, uh, also a Metro police officer, and, and I always kind of said this was my way to help the good guys catch the bad guys. So for me, it was really mission driven. I knew from an efficiency standpoint, that was a significant benefit, the ability to be more efficient, save money, do those kind of things. But at the end of the day, um, really, for me, if, if this had all been about just efficiency, I, I probably would have tried to sell, have sold the business earlier and, and left. But the fact that I really felt we were helping our profession, the CPAs and charter accountants globally, that we were catching billions of dollars of fraud, um, that was a, a, a significant mission and purpose that we had uh, that we could all rally behind and, and uh, you know, trying to figure out what the bad guys were going to do next, um, you know, that kept me motivated. You know, I had to think like a fraudster, think about how they were going to use the latest and greatest technologies to try and circumvent our technology. And so that always, uh, you know, kept the edge on uh, as we were trying to, to get out there and really help, help, uh, help the financial world. What would you say has been the most challenging thing about being an entrepreneur? Great question. So the most challenging thing about being an entrepreneur really probably is, is just the overall stress. You know, you, you've got, when you, especially when you take other people's money. I always tell people that the original capital of the business, if it had been my own money, uh, the business, it was, it was just too difficult at the time to, to have a business, and I would have quit and, and left. My, my grandparents always said, you know, they were in real estate and they always kind of said that they required the, the restaurant tour to actually invest in the land and building, which is very because they didn't want somebody to leave the keys on the counter. You know, if it'd been my own business, I would have said, Hey, this, you know, who, 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 you know, certainly we knew that the internet was going to burst. Um, we didn't know the full impact and, but nobody really could have predicted 9-11 happening. And so it would have been very easy to say, Hey, this was uh, uh, wrong time. Good idea, but the wrong time. Um, hang it up, go get a real job, go back to, to work for one of the big, big accounting firm, uh, but I had taken other people's money. And so uh, I, I really, at that point when people were saying, you ought to go, go back, get a real job. This is just too hard. I, I said, I've got to either stay here until this business 100% fails or 100% succeeds. There's, there's no quit. Um, and it was really difficult. Uh, it, it, a lot of lean times in those years. Uh, I had a family and uh, it was, uh, it was challenging, but you had to be creative and figure out how to make it happen. But, uh, but really, it was, it was really just the ups and downs of, of being, the, being the entrepreneur and trying to get that business off the ground. Going hand in hand with that, what would you say are the most important qualities to possess as an entrepreneur? Um, determination uh, is one, uh, not quitting. Uh, you know, I always loved Jermaine Baer's emails when he sent off, which was, was never give up. I think that's a trait that, that every entrepreneur has to have is just the, the inability to, to quit. Burn the, burn the bridges, whatever it takes, right? Um, but you have to be all in. Uh, there can't be a, a plan B. Uh, there's really only a plan A, and you've got to give yourself 100% to it. So determination and dedication is one. Um, the other one I would say is leading from the front. I see, especially in big businesses, I'll call them managers. They manage from the back. Um, but a real leader takes the first shots. They take the first arrows. They're out in front. They're going first. If, you know, whenever I had to ask folks that work with me to you know, scale back on their salaries, you get a no salary. I had already done that or been doing it for a period of time, right? I, you know, I was, when you're in the garage, somebody's got to, somebody's got to clean out the trash cans and clean out the toilets, right? So you do that as well, right? You got to leave from the front. Um, and so you got to be the first person to get out there and, and do those kind of things. And uh, then I think you got to really be, you, you got to have a, a mission and a purpose that people can rally behind and you've got to drive that vision and continue to drive it. Uh, and then, obviously, you've got to have a very, very high risk tolerance uh, and the ability to be okay making decisions in the absence of complete information. And that's really difficult for a lot of people to do because they want to just analyze and analyze and analyze. But in an entrepreneurial business where cash is king and you've got to figure out how to get cash coming in, you don't have time to analyze it you know, from 10 different ways to someday and then look at all the reports. You're going to make a lot of decisions. Most of your decisions are going to be made with imperfect data and input. So you, you've just got to be comfortable living in that world and living in a little bit of chaos and living with a lot of risk uh, if you're going to be an entrepreneur. 
What advice would you give to students as they start launching their business? Number one, I'd say find a good mentor. Uh, that's the best tool, the best advice I can give you. Uh, because when I started this business, I had about three years work of total work experience. And uh, while I had a good idea and I was passionate and had the, you know, the energy and the enthusiasm, I did not have the day-to-day the -day operating experience. It really was required to, to make this business a, a success. And so any entrepreneur, regardless of your age, you, you need a mentor or a board who is going to sit there and, and help you point out the kind of differences in your thinking, things that you ought to be thinking of. It's easy to, to get myopic in your in tunnel vision. Um, you need people who challenge you and, and who've been there and done that before. You know, for me, finding those, those successful business leaders who had been there and done that before, they had a point of view that, that was a longer term point of view than what I had. Right? I was in the middle of a battle and I needed their wisdom to experience and like a gray hair if you will um, to help coach me through those and so uh, you know, for me I had, I had my partner Chris Shellhorn who was really my, my business mentor my, my uncle Stan who joined my board and done uh, startups and, and was an executive at IBM uh, Jermaine was, was a mentor so I had a, a number of great mentors that I surrounded myself with that helped me get through those tough times and helped me think through them all along so that, that, that's the best tool and recommendation I can have. To wrap up, do you have any other valuable tips or advice that we might have skipped over? Yeah, I would say you know, people ask about the right timing. There's never a right time. I would say now is the right time. Just go get started and do it. Um, there, there's never a right time to start a business. There's never a right time to get married. There's never a right time to have your, your children. If you wait and wait and wait till the perfect opportunity, life's going to pass you by. So I say just jump in. Go for it. Give it all you got. And, uh, you know, as the Bible says, you know, run the race and let God you know, you know, deal with the outcome. So we're just called to run the race as hard as we can. Uh, let God figure out the, uh, whether the win or lose uh, at the end of the day and, and just know that you gave it everything you had. So, yeah, that's, that's really the best advice I can give.